I appreciate all of you who comment on my draft profiles for Liberty Ballers. In particular, I've been getting a lot of feedback from the Truth for Life 3.0, who has constantly asked for me to talk about Gonzaga's Joel IIE. Since I'm a man of the people, that's exactly what we're going to do today. My name is Daniel Olinger. This is Joel IIE. Let's get started. Ayayi is a 6'5", 180-pound off-guard from France. He just turned 20 years old and despite only starting in 23 of 33 games during his sophomore season, has been ranked as high as 25 on NBA Draft Big Boards. Ayayi's greatest skill is his transition scoring, as his height allows him to absorb contact from taller defenders and outright bully smaller ones. He's also very fast down the court, and can put immediate pressure on the defense with the speed at which he gets to the basket. But don't worry, Sixer fans. I know what you're thinking. Can this guy shoot it from three? Because let's just say the Sixers have had some trouble in that department. Well, it's kind of hard to say. He only shot 34.5% on his threes last season, but his release is smooth, and he made at least one triple in 25 out of 33 games. Notice how he keeps his elbow tucked all the way through while having hardly any offhand interference. Beautiful. He even displayed an ability to punish teams for going underneath ball screens, nailing some of these from deep range. However, my main concern is that he struggles to speed up his shot when heavily guarded or needing to release it quickly. He can't really shoot well coming off movement and away screens, which limits the amount of spacing he can provide on offense. But moving away from shooting, one thing Ayayi does really well is pass out of the pick and roll, another glaring need for the Sixers. He's got a knack for slipping the ball to the roller through narrow gaps, often with these creative one-handed hook passes. This pass right here is downright nasty. And this right here is the icing on the cake, that coveted skip to the corner out of the pick and roll. The last tool in Ayayi's offensive repertoire is his dedication to crashing the glass. While we don't have an accurate measurement of his current wingspan, it was previously measured to be 6'7 when he was 3 years younger and 2 inches shorter, so it's safe to assume that he has a plus wingspan, and he uses this length to snare rebounds out of the air with impressive catches, Almost like he's Zion, except, you know, he weighs about half as much. But that's enough of that. Now, it's on to the bad. There's a reason we've only talked about offense to this point. Some guys are at a physical disadvantage and can only do so much no matter how hard they try, while others are gifted but lack the will and desire to exert energy as a defender. Ayayi isn't some towering beast, but he's definitely not disadvantaged, and yet he has a horribly low motor that leads him to being a very bad team defender. He reads this play right and bumps down at the right time to cover the roller, but doesn't actually bother to get in front of him and willingly surrenders the dunk. He's particularly bad at closing out to guys on the perimeter, as he's almost never in a good defensive stance around the balls of his feet, and often can't flip his hips in time to keep the opposition in front of him. Yai isn't the one who should be helping the post on this play, yet he still comes down and turns his back in the wrong direction after a simple pass fake, which completely exposes the Gonzaga defense for a score. Even when it doesn't hurt the rest of his team, you can't help but watch Ayayi in the top right here and be shocked at how disengaged he is. It's not like Ayayi is incapable or a lost cause as a defender. Here on this play he makes a really smart read by sitting down to prevent the lob to the big man, then busts his butt to get back out there and contest the three point shot. But that doesn't excuse him from all of these lapses, where he looks like he would sooner get hit in the face with a crowbar than put forth effort on defense. Keep an eye on Ayayi here, as he gives up on offense and starts walking back down the court, yet never runs nor slides as Xavier Simpson barrels down toward the rim and simply concedes the layup. Not to be dramatic, but I kinda hate that. And the bad doesn't end there, because for all the potential Ayayi shows on offense, he is still fairly limited, especially in situations of higher difficulty. That didn't look like too bad of a play on the surface, 
but after beating his defender with a backdoor cut, he needs to finish that at the rim, not dribble around it and dump it off to his teammate. Unfortunately, Ayayi has a lot of these plays where he's too afraid to go all the way to the basket due to his lack of vertical explosiveness. This is made worse by his poor mid-range ability, as he has bad touch on floaters and poor footwork on step-back jumpers. I'll be honest, I didn't know a lot about Ayayi before the truth's request for me to scout him. Draft experts have a wide range of opinions on him, as everyone except Tankathon has him rated outside the top 40, and some don't even project him getting drafted. If I ran the Sixers, I definitely wouldn't take him with the 22nd pick in the draft. However, if he's still available in the second round, he's definitely worth taking a flyer on. You pick a guy for the player you think that he will one day be, not what he is now. Ayayi barely played as a freshman, didn't start as a sophomore, but somehow ended the year as the MVP of the West Coast Conference Tournament. He's improving very quickly, and perhaps he'll continue to do that as a member of the 76ers. Thanks for watching.